morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to New Life Alliance this morning, those here in the sanctuary and those online. Let's all come together as one body under Christ and, and rise and praise the living God, for he is the everlasting God. He reigns forever. God. We praise you. We glorify you. We honor you. We uphold you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, in this place today, we pray the blood of Christ over our very souls. Wash us clean. Make us whole. Father, may we be holy, set apart for you and your good works. Father, in this place, have your way among us. Shape us, mold us, change us, challenge us, shape us, that we might bring you honor and glory. In the name of your son, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. All except for Colin and Linda Birdsey, they're in the doghouse. Oh, you're well. Come on. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> Are you like formally like a deaconess or something? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah, you know, I'm not real I sure. So, yeah. I just serve. <laughs> I just church serve ladies. the church ladies. <laughs> I I just serve. Lady. Yeah, I just serve. Yeah. If you're the treasurer, I know that. I know you're the treasurer. So. so just so you can put some eyeballs on, you know, all that kind of stuff. So how might we pray for you guys? Sir? 
Well, um, Spencer talked about, uh, taught about it this morning. We, we're starting a new chapter in our lives, and we really need God's wisdom, his guidance, and how best to use whatever he's given us. So God's wisdom is what we really need. Okay. You'd agree. You'd agree. <laughs> and you'd agree. I agree. Okay. I agree with my husband. <laughs> Wow, that's a nice thing. Is it taking notes? <laughs> What's that, sir? That's right. Yeah, when, when, when is that? Friday. Friday, 20 years? Woohoo! All right. Amen, amen. Yes, yes. Keep, keep the pace. Keep it going. Keep it going. All right, let's pray for you guys. Father, I just want to come before you and uphold my dear brother and sister before you, Father, and just thank you, Father, for their friendship and what they mean to me personally. Father, I just thank you for all the ways in which they have guided and helped and led and spoken into my life. And, Father, I know what they mean to your church, to your kingdom. And, Father, I would pray that you might continue to bind them together, that they might be useful in your kingdom. And, Father, as they come before you, Father, with uh, the cries upon their heart to say, we, we need good guidance and wisdom and knowledge and understanding of this new page and new chapter in our life, Father. We're celebrating 20 years of marital bliss, Father, but we're going to be moving forward into a new change. And, Father, we pray that you would guide them, that you would give them the wisdom that they ask for. And, Father, that they would recognize the hand of God upon their lives. Give them good direction. Give them clarity of vision. Father, that they would accomplish that which you desire for them in their lives, Father. We pray that continued bonds of love just continue to flourish and strengthen and grow and that their lives serve as a witness and a testimony of what God can do in the midst of someone's life. Father, we come before you upholding our dear brother and sister before you in the name of your son. Amen. We love you guys. God bless you so much. Miss Lydia, you have an announcement? Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi, Lydia. So, if you will notice in your bulletin, this fantastic whole page dedicated to the uh, Kidmen Summer Ministries. The whole page of it. There's so many opportunities for you. It's just astounding. So I'd like to first of all thank everyone that did. Okay, I have to breathe for a minute. I wasn't able to be there for Nerf and Nachos. And everyone stepped up and it overwhelmed me. And my gratitude is so deep. And I just want to thank you for your prayers also. Okay, hold on. I'll be good. All right, next event. I'll just move on. Is pizza and paint night. There is a sign-up sheet in the back. If you don't know what that is, we order pizza. It's open up to the community. They come and they kind of do like uh, what they do at Uptown Art or um, where you paint a, pic a picture as guided by the Fabu Glenn Barefoot. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> and it's for the whole family. You can even come. Oh, good. imagine that. It's not just for the kids. And you will come out with a masterpiece and no experience required. Um, we need help with that because we tend to get a lot of kids for that and it helps to have helpers at the table with them, you know, just to help with the, all the little things like the paintbrushes and the water and everything else. So sign up sheet for that. Also in mid-July is our VBS. We haven't had one since 2019. So I have out there registration forms for volunteers. It's very simple. And on the back, make sure you turn it over. Is all the different areas that you could possibly even help with. And you don't even have to be there the whole time. You can just let us know on the front which days you want to come, which days you can help, and what things you're interested in doing. Doesn't mean we're going to make you do kitchen duty and games and be on stage. It just it tells me all the areas you are available for, and then we'll pick it out. So, VBS is coming again. We're very excited. It's gonna be Lava Lava Luau. Oh, and the date, thank you, is July 13th through the 15th. So it's gonna be Thursday night, Friday night, and most of Saturday. So it's not even the whole week. You can do this, I have faith in you. 
So that's it for me, and thank you again. Thank you, Miss Lydia. We're going to go to our video announcements, but while we're doing video announcements, why don't we stand up and greet one another? All right.
Do we or no? Well, let's all continue in God's praise and give him all the glory that he's due. With one voice, we give God all the glory.
praise. He's our healer, our savior, our deliverer, our all in all.
What a powerful, what a beautiful, what a wonderful name. The name of Jesus. We speak Jesus over our families, over our work, over all aspects of our life. There was power in his name.
Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your name, that in that name is everything. Healing, hope, life, salvation. We speak Jesus. Father, we invite, we, we don't even, we don't have to invite you. We know you're here. We pray, Father, for your anointing over the message. We pray your anointing in our lives as we speak and live Jesus. We give you glory. We give you praise. For the honor, do your name, Jesus. This is Jesus, born into poverty in an insignificant corner of a conquered nation. This is Jesus, a traveling preacher, a homeless outcast called crazy and possessed. This is Jesus, another hopeless rebel, mocked and beaten, hung on a cross to die. This is Jesus. Another lifeless body, stuffed into a borrowed tomb, soon to be forgotten. Is this really Jesus? Wake up. Wake up, O oh sleeper, and rise from the dead. This is Jesus sent by the Father to be crushed for the sins of the world. This is Jesus, declaring to all he would be killed and then raised to life on the third day. This is Jesus, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead. This is Jesus, a missing body from an empty tomb on a Sunday morning. This is Jesus the image of invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, the Lamb of God, the light of the world. This is Jesus, Savior, Lord, King, Alpha, Omega, Creator, Redeemer, friend to sinners, hope of nations, the Messiah. This is Jesus, the resurrection and the life for all who trust in him. Wake up, wake up, O oh sleeper, and rise from the dead. This is Jesus.
my friend. Is there any people in here? Any people? There's some people here? Good. All right. Do you, I was kind of struggling on how to start this. Like, uh, do you consider yourself a person? A human being? Or are some people struggling with their identity and that they think they're a cat and they're not a human? Or they think they're a horse, they're not a human? Anybody struggling with their identity and that they're a person? Nobody? We're all people in here, pretty much, right? We kind of get that? We're people? All right. We're, we kind of almost would consider ourselves an average kind of person? Just a person like most every other person? Fairly common like everybody else? We pay bills? Like most people? <laughs> we pay bills? We work? Some people <laughs> work? Work. We, maybe we work at different things, but we pretty much all like people. We work. We play. Sometimes we play at different things, but you know, some people like golf, some people like bowling, some people like cards. Some, but people, you know, we play. We kind of like everybody else, like most people. Eat. Do we have that in common? People kind of eat. We're all. We all. Yeah, maybe we eat different things, but we pretty much. You know, some people like pierogies, some people like, you know, they like spaghetti, some people like sausage, some people like just the plants and the fruits and vegetables. So, but we eat. It's, we share that in common. We're all pretty much like that. Sleep. Everybody pretty, yeah, Melinda does not get enough, but we sleep. That's pretty, we're common in that regard. We're human. We all sleep doesn't matter whether you're in China or Russia or Brazil or in the United States of America. People all over the world pretty much have kind of these things in common. We're people. And uh, if you eat, then you probably poop. Pretty much all people kind of there. Anybody not have indoor plumbing? So we're, we're very fortunate very fortunate in that regard. So we have a lot of this stuff that's kind of common amongst people. We're all people, human beings in that regard. You know what else we all have in common because we're people? Everyone is exhausted. Everybody gets tired. Everybody gets stressed out. Financial pressures. We share a lot of those same things in common. Just as much as we would eat and sleep, we get stressed and we have high anxiety. We worry about health care and we get impatient in the checkout line or the drive through We get nervous about the future. Maybe we get nervous not about our own future, but we also get nervous about the future of the coming generation. We all share these things in common. We all, we all have issues. We've all got problems. We all got human problems. Money issues and health issues all over the world where there are people, human beings. Human life has a lot of common factors and elements, and we cannot escape being human. You can't escape being a human. Now, when we speak the name of Jesus and we think about Jesus... Jesus came to show us a better way to live a human life. He came to give us a better way. A narrow way. I realize now that my companions will be few. Many will not walk the narrow walk. They will not lead the disciplined life. Many will walk the wide and easy path. Or they will become their own gods and they will, they will choose, you know, I'm not a human, I'm a cat. Right? And there's a, or they'll choose some other god in which to follow, even if they themselves are their own god. But Jesus offers anyone and everyone a path to an extraordinary life. 
And I dare say it this way, it's probably mm, even unfamiliar with a lot of people that are in church, unfamiliar to churchgoers, not just those that are outside the church. He offers a different way, a better way. Didn't say easier. He offers a better way. And you realize that your companions will be few. In our scripture reading, Paul's writing about the Corinthian church, or he's writing to the Corinthian church. And he speaks about what an honor and a privilege it is to bring the gospel to the lost. What an honor and a privilege it is to bring the gospel to the lost. Though it cost him dearly. It cost him. And it was difficult. And it was painful. If there's anything I can say and tell any ministers or any future church leaders, it's this, that I have always felt privileged to serve the Lord. I've always called it a privilege and an honor to serve God. He didn't call me because I was equipped. He equips the called. It's an honor to be considered to preach, to even stand behind the pulpit. I'm a nervous wreck every Sunday. I stress out all week long about bringing God's word to you. I need you to soap and I need you to pray. Because I'm a broken vessel when I come up here. But it's an honor and a privilege that I step into to teach the word. It's my honor to be asked to perform wedding or a baptism or a baby dedication or even a funeral and a celebration of someone's life. It's a privilege to serve in this capacity. Now, Paul renounces, this is kind of interesting, he, Paul renounces any attempt to present the gospel with manipulation. He renounces any attempt to present the gospel with tricks or gimmetry, showmanship or, or carnal wisdom. In 2 Corinthians, he writes pretty clear, and I stand on that myself. I did not come to you with wise and persuasive words. I came to you with a demonstration of the Holy Spirit's power so that your faith may not rest on men, but may rest on the Holy Spirit. And isn't that refreshing? See, for someone like me, that's refreshing. I don't hear enough of that amongst ministers and amongst pastors. I've sat in countless marketing strategies to market the nonprofit organization called The Church. We need to package our presentation. We need to color scheme our letterhead. We need to unify our brand and the way in which we present ourselves. And listen, that's tough to navigate. That's tough to navigate because we want to market Jesus. I'm sorry, we, we want to... We display and, and preach and speak Jesus. No, we're marketing Jesus. We want to trust in our demographics. I want to know who's around us and who we're preaching to and who we're going to reach. We, need, we want to trust in our assessments of who we are as a body of Christ. You're, you're strong in leadership or you're weak in leadership or you're strong in your music ability, but you're, you lack in discipleship. You're, we want to trust in all of those things. We want to trust in our fancy lights and our, and our PowerPoints and our guitars and our, and our drum sets. As if they're going to reach people as if that's what it's going to take. Where was all this stuff 2,000 years ago? Paul would say, preach the good news in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Everything else is helpful and useful. Preach the gospel. If necessary, use a piano. Preach the gospel. If necessary, use a PowerPoint. Preach the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And if necessary, use a guitar. It's useful and helpful, but it is not the power. Preach the gospel clearly. And listen, the scriptures are clear. Even then, preach the gospel clearly. Even then, it will be veiled from the unbeliever. They still won't see it. Use a PowerPoint. They still won't see it. Get AC in the sanctuary. Make sure everybody's comfortable. Even then, you preach the gospel clearly, and the unbeliever will not see it. 
pad the pews, make sure they're nice and comfy when they sit down, flash the lights, bang on the drums, turn the guitars up. Even then, the gospel will be veiled from the unbeliever. Use, use your cell phone. Don't forget to text some people. Put it on Facebook. Make sure we broadcast. Even then, preaching the gospel will be veiled to the unbeliever. See, folks, the believer has been blessed. Any believers in here? So, so we've got some people, people in the house. We got some believers? Give me an amen. amen. The unbeliever has been blessed with an uncommon knowledge. There's your first one. You've been blessed with an uncommon knowledge. You might think you're normal people. You might think you're kind of average and ordinary and common, just like everybody else. And for the most part, you are. You're a person. You're a people. Yet, there is something. There is some spirit within you that changes everything about you. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord. And ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let the light shine out of the darkness. That goes way back to creation. Let the light shine out of the darkness. Made his light shine in your hearts. To give us the light. Are you ready? Verse 6. The light of the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God's glory. Important. A lot of people have a knowledge of God. Let light shine out of darkness. Made his light shine in your own hearts. To give us the light and the knowledge of God's glory. You have the knowledge of God's glory. You're filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You have been privileged to have the veil removed from your eyes. You have been privileged that the curtain has been torn away. That the walls of separation have come down between you and God. That the scales on your eyes have withered and fallen away. You have an uncommon knowledge amongst a very common people. I was blind, but now I see. I was blind, but now I see, thank God. I was blind, but now I see, thank God. My heart was dark, now he filled it with light. My heart was dark, but he filled it with light. My heart was dark. He filled it with light. There's an uncommon knowledge that I possess that this world does not. And he filled me with the Holy Spirit of God that I might know him. Not know of him, but that I might know him. Listen, that uncommon knowledge leads to an uncommon awareness. That uncommon knowledge leads to an uncommon awareness. It's an awareness of your lostness before God. It's an awareness of your sin before God. Many are in the dark about their sin. Many are in the dark about their separation from God. They don't feel separated. They have a knowledge of God. There's an awareness even of our own disobedience. And the Holy Spirit that dwells within you brings that right quick. Though you stumble and though you fall and though you make mistakes, like people, there's something different about this uncommon knowledge that you've been possessed with. And that awareness makes you absolutely uncommon. God uncovers and he makes you aware. And he gives you the knowledge of himself and he gives you the knowledge of yourself. Most people walk around thinking they're okay. And if they're not okay, they want to be a cat. 
they're not okay, they want to be a horse. If they're not okay, they want to be something else. If they're not okay, they're struggling, 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 hurt, confused, painful. They don't need to be cleansed from anything. There are many people walking into the church that don't feel like they even need the church. There are many people walking around that have a knowledge of God but don't need the church. They don't need other believers. They're okay. No improvement necessary. You came into a deep spiritual insight and understanding that sets you apart from others. And it makes you holy. What is holy? To be set apart. For God's use. You know, there's plenty of uh, spatulas in the world. But when God takes a spatula and puts it in the temple, calls it holy. He set that spatula apart to be used for his glory. That spatula is holy. Why is it holy compared to all the other spatulas? Because God set it apart. God has set you apart. Here's your next slide. You've been given a spiritual knowledge of something that others only guess at. How many times have you heard people guessing at their spiritual identity? who they are and what they think and what they believe and why they and there's no foundation they're guessing don't guess you know many of them claim to be christians many of them fill churches far too many people are just wandering around making up stuff they're not looking at the truth of their creator from their creator they're not living a biblical life they live a very common knowledge of God life. You following me? There's a very good distinction between knowing God and knowing of God. You have been given tremendous insight, and I'm pleading with you, please do not waste what you've been given. Nurture it. Expand it. Explore it. Investigate it. Go deeper you will find that you're not so common after all. You will find that your companions start to get fewer and fewer and fewer. You will find that you possess an uncommon knowledge and a knowledge that needs to be shared, a knowledge that needs to be passed on and passed down and passed around. But yet, if necessary, use a piano. If necessary, use a guitar. If necessary, use a PowerPoint. Even to the unbeliever, it will still be veiled. You will discover how very, very blessed you are and how uncommon you are. And God chose you. I don't know that I would choose you, but God chose you. I don't think I would choose me. But God chose. And we have this treasure in jars of clay <laughs> to show that this all-surpassing power is from God. It's in this weakened vessel. Why is it in this weakened vessel? To show that the all-surpassing power is not yours. It's from God himself and not from us. And we get hard-pressed on every side, like every human being, but we are not crushed. We get perplexed, like every people in the world, but we are not in despair. We get persecuted, but we are not abandoned. We get struck down, but we are not destroyed. Because here's your next one. We have an uncommon power. We have an uncommon power. The power is not commonplace. And there'll be AA meetings all day long today, all across the globe, trying to find their higher power so that they can find power to overcome their addiction. You have great knowledge of an uncommon power. You possess that. 
You have that power. You have that strength. How amazing to walk around with hope in your heart all day long. Do you walk around with hope in your heart all day long? A hope that's out of this world. A hope that's uncommon to this world that many are seeking and looking for and striving for and struggling to find. And God has blessed you and privileged you and given himself over to you. Joy beyond your circumstances. You are connected to something that this world knows very little of. The uncommon believer walks with an incredible amount of patience. Patience to deal with the world that doesn't quite seem to get it. It takes a lot of patience for me to watch the news. They don't get it. The uncommon believer walks around with great faith and power and prayer and in healing. Forgiveness is upon their lips. Gratitude is upon their hearts. How many people are sitting around in their house grateful and thankful? Sitting down at the dinner table with joyfulness. Receiving the blessings of God into their lives. Or are they complaining about the world? God has given you something uncommon that goes bigger and beyond this world. Grace that abounds and flows from you. Mercy that radiates from the depths of your very soul. You have a love that sees people hurt. They're hurting. They're lost. They're confused. They don't even know if they want to be a cat or a horse, but they'll deny being a human being. Lost, confused, angry. You've been given a great knowledge and a great power of compassion. I hope one day you find what I have found. It takes the Holy Spirit's power to walk around this common world and not just want to give up. The uncommon power you possess is to see this world in an uncommon way. Do you need me to repeat that? The uncommon power you possess is to see this world in an uncommon way. The world is wasting away. Scriptural. The world is dying. It's condemned. It's cursed. Evil exists, and it has infiltrated this realm. And it will come to pass, just like the scriptures say it will. It will come to nothing. It will all decay, and Christ will descend. Are you hearing me? And Christ will return. You see things and view this world in an entirely uncommon way. You possess this power to see the world, not as the common world sees the world. You see the world as God sees the world. He gave you himself and filled you with himself that you might be able to see the world as he sees the world, that you would be able to see people as he sees people. And listen, with this power comes, are you ready? Here's the word. It's a tough word. It's a tough word. With this power comes great responsibility. I know we want to evade responsibility, but with this power comes great responsibility. The power to speak into lives and to change the world, to change those that are around you. The power to help remove the veils, to bring peace, to speak grace and faith and patience into people's lives, to offer encouragement where there's hopelessness, to offer love where there's despair. You possess great power. You have great responsibility. You can be angry with this world if you so choose. God is not. He's working to save it. You want to work with him? He's going to rebuild it. Jesus came to save that which was lost. It's already condemned. He didn't come to condemn it. It's already condemned. He came to save it. Those that the veils would be taken away. To open the eyes of those that are blind. 
Do that which the, has heavenly Father sent him to do. He has given you this great blessing that you might join him in the cause. What are you going to do with this great, uncommon knowledge? What are you going to do with this great, uncommon power? Are you using it for selfish gain? Are you giving everything you got, or are you holding back? This is an interesting way the Lord put it to me. Are you interested in what the world has to offer you? Are you interested in what the world has to offer you? Or here's your next slide. Are you offering this world what the Lord has given you? Are you interested in what the world has to offer you? Or are you offering to this world what the Lord has given you? All this for your benefit. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away. Anybody in here not aging? Anybody not aging? Yeah, so we're all aging. Okay. Another thing that people do, right? Just another thing that people do. Therefore, do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. Inwardly we're being renewed day by day by day. Exactly how do you define life? Exactly how do you define life? Is it a spiritual life or is it a physical life? I know this. Here's your next one. It's an uncommon life. You have an uncommon life. And your uncommon life will look unusual. It will look unusual. The life you live in the Lord, it will not look common because it's not. The Lord has removed the scales from your eyes and he's parted, imparted upon you a unique knowledge and he's given gifts upon you and given a power unto you. So what are you doing for Christ's sake with what you've been given? The very way in which you live speaks of that power and that testimony. So what are you saying by the way you're living? What are you saying by the way you're giving? What are you saying by the way you're walking and talking with the power and the knowledge and the uncommon power and the uncommon knowledge that you possess? See, preaching and teaching with the Holy Spirit of God, it's the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead was within Paul. The same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead was in Paul and Peter and how uncommon, how powerful, how amazing that God would do this this way. The Lord desires to reach people where they live, work, and play. And he desires to involve you with that plan, is that okay? Is that okay with you, or are you struggling with what God wants to do within you and through you? That's his plan. That's God's plan. What's yours? Are you working with the Lord in your life? See, New Life Alliance Church, you know what we do? We make disciples, we mature believers, and we multiply ministries. That's all we do. That's all we do. Nothing complex, nothing too elaborate. We just, we make disciples, we mature the believer, and we multiply the ministry. That's what we do over, 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 and over again. And if necessary, use some drums. If necessary, right? Play the piano. You have an uncommon life. A life that not thinks only of the physical, but thinks of the eternal and the spiritual. The way you think, the way you speak, the way you act, the way you drive, the way you work, the way you play, everything speaks about who you are and the uncommonness of your life. If you would take a moment to pray, you know, over a meal before you scoff it down, you're living an uncommon life. 
Absolutely an uncommon life. If you were to pray in public over the pizza before you scoffed it down, you're living a radical life. Wow. What a testimony. Wow. That's just like weird. Yeah. Pray for your wife so that she hears you? Man, how uncommon. That's an unusual life. Pray for your kids so they hear you? Man, that's an uncommon life. Show up at a Bible study? Man, that's living an uncommon life. Show up on a prayer video call? Give generously and cheerfully? Man, that's uncommon life. Volunteer, church, volunteer to give, volunteer at VBS, volunteer? That's an uncommon life. Volunteer for the glory of God? That's radical, man. That God would receive glory in your life and through your life for the things that you do? Work not as unto the world, but work as unto the Lord? Live an uncommon life. People will notice. Let it shine. The world will think you're nuts. My family thinks I'm nuts. God says, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. Take a moment and quote a scripture to a coworker. How uncommonly nice of you. Take a moment to send a, a prayer note to a friend. How uncommonly thoughtful of you. Take an hour and visit an elderly shut-in. How uncommonly considerate of you. I don't live a life trying to impress a lost world. Do you? Don't live a life trying to impress a lost world. Impress God with your faithfulness, your kindness, and your thoughtfulness. After all, you have an audience of one. An audience of one. I do find myself when I'm talking with people that have a veil over their eyes or scales upon their eyes, I try not to use too many biblical terms. I use God-affirming words, hope, encouraging words, love, kindness, patience, right? I try not to use the holy words like... Uh, you know, sanctification. You know? To, an, to those that are veiled, what? You know, glorification. What? What are you talking about? You know, justification and all those. It's, the, see, uh, the Holy Spirit likes to speak. And the Spirit of God, I recognize, speaks a different language than the common world. And so oftentimes I, I try to there's a certain truth in that. There's, there's just a, there's a, there's a different way in which we speak. There's a different way in which we encourage. There's a different way in which we mourn. There's a difference. And it's just an example of how we are in the world, but not of the world. To live an uncommon life is to not lose hope for the lost world. You have to be willing to do what most people won't. There's your next slide. So that you can live like most people don't. Live a very uncommon life. In the scriptures, our light and momentary troubles. Does anybody in here feel like your troubles are light and momentary? Well, that's what they are. That's what they are. I know it seems heavy. I know it seems like cancer. I know it seems like the death of you. I know it seems like you will die. But your flesh is light and momentary. And these light and momentary troubles are achieving for us. They're achieving something? They're achieving something. An eternal glory. Oh, I like the sound of that. That far outweighs all of those light and momentary troubles. Yeah, man, I'm standing on that hope. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on that which is unseen. Since what is seen is, what was the word in the scripture? Temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. What are you focused on? What are you thinking about? The stuff this world has to offer you? And what 
what you have to offer this world. Do you have an uncommon view? There's your next one. Our cause and our focus is on the heavenly realms, the spiritual world. We think more about eternity than our do we should than our, than our hundred years of life if we're lucky. Your light and momentary problems are about a hundred years in the grand scheme of eternity. We think more about the glories of God. We think about praise and worship. We think about prayer. We think about presence of God. We think about reunions in heaven. We think about a resurrected body that one day I will shed this tent, this perishable, immoral tent of flesh, and it will be gone. It will be raised into a glorified body. Think about a new heaven and a new earth and what is yet to come. There's hope, so much hope, so much peace, even in the midst of cancer. There's so much hope and so much peace that even death cannot take it away. Am I preaching to the believer? We know that this world is fading away. You have a very uncommon view. We have a different view of of the world and its people. We have a cause to speak even into the world a better place, a better way, a better life that's not so common. We have a cause that seems very radical, but it brings eternal joy. A cause that seems so radical, but it brings peace, tranquility, serenity. It speaks hope and encouragement. And it can appear unbelievable because it is. God wants you to live an unbelievable life unbelievable life and it serves as a testimony for the glory of God a cause that oftentimes will wrestle with the physical but it's veiled to an un, to a dying world it can often seem like preaching and teaching and living the uncommon life offers I don't know little earthly reward yet it produces bountiful riches in heaven but it also produces bountiful riches here We must focus not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Describe to me, if you could, the colors of reconciliation. That takes place here. Describe to me what that's like. Unbelievable. The unseen. Can you draw a picture for me, if you would? I have a blank page here. Draw me a picture of grace. What, what does that look like in your life? What, what, what color or, or what race is forgiveness? No riches here on earth? What, what, what's the shape of gentleness? Can you outline mercy for me? A subtle outline of kindness and what that looks like in the heart of someone. You're amazing. You're amazing. You are not common. You are very uncommon because of what God has done in you and through you. You're unbelievable. You're unmatched. You're glorious. Holy Spirit filled. And you get the privilege of serving, honoring Him in your day-to-day existence. In this flesh. In this flesh will wither away And the essential you, the character of you, will live on. And the presence of God, he's marked you for it. The things that matter most aren't things. How many times have you heard that? 
the things that matter most aren't things. The unseen, the intangibles that change a common life into a very uncommon life. I like the way the scripture some phrases it up in some of the things that I'm not in this world. I'm not crushed. I am not in despair. I am not abandoned. And I am not destroyed. I know that now. That's not eternity. That's right here and right now. I choose to walk. I'm not crushed. I'm not in despair. I'm not abandoned. And I am not destroyed. An uncommon view of life forms an uncommon way of living. From a worldly vision to a spiritual vision, from worldly lives to spirit-filled lives, may each and every one of us live an uncommon life with uncommon fellowship in an uncommon church. Let me pray for you. Father, in this place, I thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit here. I thank you for the people that are here. I thank you for the believers that are here. May you work in each and every one of us. Father, may you transform our hearts, transform our minds. May we understand that which you desire of us and from us now that you have saved us. May we live an uncommon life that brings you glory and honor. Set us apart as holy that we would again bring you all the honor and all the glory. We cannot do this on our own. We need you. And so, Father, I would pray that you might minister into each and every life. And if there are those here in this place in this moment that aren't quite sure if they're a believer, would you settle it in their hearts and in their minds right now? Wash them clean with the blood of Jesus Christ. May they cry out and confess, I believe in you, Jesus, and I want to live an uncommon life. May you touch them and fill them to overflowing. And Father, may you bind us all together as your church to bring you praise that our lives would serve and serve you well. Come before you in the name of your Son. Amen. God bless you guys. would come forward to get ready for the offering. I'm reminded of that song, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. I was so moved, you know. I wonder, Bob and Barb, can we sing that song? Can we sing On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand as we take the, as we take the, I can't sing, I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket, but you guys can. Jody, could you pull up on Christ the Solid Rock I Stand? I know I'm putting you, putting you on the spot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for the offering, and then if we could go to sing it at the same time. Is that asking too much? Our God and Father, we thank you for your many blessings to us. We thank you for uh, this message this morning, Lord. Just, we give it all back to you. Thank you for your blessings to us. Thank you for putting a hedge around us, around our finances, around everything that we have. Our family, wherever they might be, we just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Built on nothing, then Jesus blood.
Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel. I have summoned you. You are mine. I have redeemed you. Do not fear. Go, serve your God. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>